My 2000 Jeep Cherokee originally came equipped with ABS and a Dana 35 rear axle, but naturally had to swap in a Chrysler eight and a quarter, which I already did effectively making the ABS system useless. So I pulled the fuse to turn out the ABS light in the dash, but after recently swapping out my master cylinder and brake booster, after bleeding my brakes, I still get a squishy pedal. I can't get it to bleed out. So I think we got some air trapped in the ABS module here and you can't bleed it really. Well, I can't bleed it anyway here. Today, we're gonna do away with all this. We're gonna complete the ABS to non ABS swap. We got all new brake lines. We're gonna have to do some work to the proportioning valve. Let's check it out. Before we do any work in the shop here, we actually need to go to the junkyard first. Reason being, on uh, ABS equipped Jeeps like this, the proportioning valve has a plug at the back here. But on a non-ABS Jeep, a brake line comes out of there. So we need the fitting that plugs into the back here. Now I'll probably end up grabbing the whole proportioning valve because you just have to take off two nuts and then cut all the brake lines and take the whole thing. So off to the junkyard. Found all the XJs. Now all we need to do is find one that has an eight and a quarter and we'll know it doesn't have ABS and we can steal that proportioning valve. And that's an eight and a quarter. So this would be a candidate, but I've been around here before. This black one here is pretty new. The axle's gone, so I suspect it was an eight and a quarter. Let's have a look. Ooh, I was wrong. ABS module, no good. All right, we'll check out that green one. Brother! All right, this one would work. That's the fitting we're after right here at the back. Um, that one looks a little crusty though. I'm gonna check these anyway, see if there's a better looking one. Never mind. that hood's stuck, and this one's just inconvenient to work on. Brought all the tools I need right here. I think I'm just gonna snip brake lines and then just take off the two half inch nuts see how these go nothing to it nice all right we'll be out here in no time should be everything there it be we go got this thing soaking in pb trying to get them fittings loosened up in the meantime we'll start getting rid of all all of this see how it goes get it unplugged this harness will kind of have to stay in place because that plug's going there. Two mounting bolts, looks like it, but I'm gonna cut all these lines first, then we can get this thing out of there. that do it? One more? Found it. Right there. Was it a nut and a bolt? Ah, there was indeed a nut up in there, but I got it. So this should be good now. Trash. Take off all these old lines. Next. Got those two off, we should be good now. Take this old portioning valve off. There it is. Check out the difference here. Here's the non-ABS one. And if you wanted to, you could just go to the junkyard and take this fitting off. And then on your ABS Jeep, take the plug off the back, screw the fitting in. But I think I'm gonna try and use this whole thing as long as these fittings don't give us too hard of a time. Oh, we're in good shape be all right try this little guy before we get too ahead of ourselves we good pretty much ready to go now if you're like me and you like to only take exactly what you need to the junkyard it's a 5 8 for both the non abs fitting and the plug on the abs portioning valve now the fun is only just beginning because now we have to pull out all the old lines which disappear down into the abyss and get to replace it with the new lines. One of them comes up here across the firewall. Right there you can see it, maybe, right there. Obviously the one that goes to the back. This whole kit, uh, this came from inline tube and it comes with everything, even the over the axle lines or something. Is that one of them? I don't know. I'm gonna get the Jeep up on all fours and pull off all the wheels. Get a little bit better idea what we're dealing with. Took me a minute, got all my brake lines laid out. We'll go over them real quick, show you each one. Here's the driver side half of the firewall going over the passenger side. There's the other half. That's what that one looks like. Okay. And then the front driver side is just this little guy here going there like that. And then the big long one is what goes from front to back. And then it comes with over the axle lines, but I'm not going to worry about that today. Mine are pretty fresh. What I'm going to work on now is getting all the old lines cut out and permanently removed. Both the front wheel wells have the brake line coming down here. You just unscrew the little 3 8 fitting. And then what I did, I just uh, came up here and I cut the line. Can you see that? Right there-ish. Cut the line. I should be able to fish this thing out. It's pretty much just doing that 
all around the Jeep, cutting and pooling and just getting them all out of there. The firewall is going to be the interesting part. I got all the lines off the firewall already. It actually wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be. I actually just cut it right in the middle and um, pulled it out each side. It worked out pretty well that way. And that should continue to work out because it's in two halves and you got to put a union in the middle anyway. So I think I have enough room that I'll be able to put in the lines first and then install the union right in the middle. There was one clip here holding the brake line and then I think it's supposed to be clipped in along the firewall but this engine has been out so many times and I messed with the wiring so many times I don't think any of that's left so it doesn't have to be perfect by any means but get working on that well that sucked not gonna lie and it's not exactly pre-bent anymore but I got her in there I don't know what the best way to do it is but I started it up here and then just tried to get it behind everything and then go in so half decent gonna do this side now and See if I can get them to hook up. Actually, before I snug these down, I'm gonna throw this driver's side one in quick since I need to thread it into the back here. Should be easy. Driver's side is all good to go, hooked up on both ends. Get this other half of the passenger side fished in there, like that. Almost done with the front. Now, this side wasn't near as bad as that side. I got it pretty much routed and got it started here. But here is our one end and there's the other end and somehow we gotta make them meet, put that union on there. So I'm gonna have to mess with that I bend it a little bit and such. Got her done, there it is. I had to get in some weird positions to make that happen, so be glad you didn't see that. But that does about wrap up the front. I'll just get that tucked back there. Is that a factory clip I'm about to use? Yes, nice. That won't stay, but good enough. Underneath the Jeep now, I already got it cut there. That's just the line that runs right up to the valve. Obviously it's above the cross member, it tucks in here behind the uh, parking brake bracket thing. If memory serves me right, factory, there's like a bracket that this little thing attaches to, but mine's gone. So mine's just gonna attach to this hose right here. I should actually probably have that zip tied. I'm just gonna undo that fitting and then cut this out as I need to to get it pulled out. And we'll route the new one and hopefully it won't fight us as hard as the rest of it has been. That was actually refreshingly easy to get the old one out and the new one into place. Now before I get it all snapped into these clips and tucked away, I'm going to head up top and make sure it looks good up there. We'll actually get it connected. And there it is, right there. Looks good. Then you need this little guy to go from the valve down to that brake line, right like that. That's all snugged up good to go so we're pretty much done i got the one in the back here connected also good to go last thing to do is run lines from the master cylinder to the proportioning valve that's these guys right here got them on there got it topped off with fluid let's do a little leak check is drinking it now we'll start getting it bled we'll start in the back right corner pretty much working around farthest away from the master cylinder to the closest finally got a hold of courtney to help me bleed brakes all right, I got the bleeder valve cracked open and then just go into this bottle of fluid. That way we can just keep pumping and uh, get the lines filled up. Pump it up. And I need to keep an eye on the master cylinder. Since we got brand new lines, it's gonna be drinking fluid. We're moving some fluid. That should be good. And I'm gonna do this all around just to make sure we have fluid to all four corners. The back's good, do the front, hit it. Here comes some air. Oh yeah. All right, we got fluid to all four corners and come to think of it, there's no reason I can't just bleed them like this regularly. There's no way for air to get in the system if one end is submerged in fluid here. And as long as the master cylinder doesn't run dry, we'll be all right. I'm gonna crack this a little bit loose, stick the hose on. We'll check it, pump it. No air bubbles there, we're good. I'm just gonna verify on each corner one more time. I'd call that bled. Got her topped up on fluid. How's it feel? Good. Where's that squeaking coming from? Uh -huh. Nuh-uh. It's back here. I heard back here. I heard back here. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do it? Well, every corner I go to, it sounds like the other corner. It's the back. <laughs> it is, I'm telling you. I think it's right here. I don't even care. Real quick, I'm gonna get the wheels back on, get the Jeep back on the ground, take it for a test drive. All right, let's get her on the road, see how she stops. Oh, by the way, no detectable leaks found. I feel like I should say that. Yeah, so I think we're good. Hot. Jeep problems. <laughs> turn, turn. Oh, and this guy's mowing. What is right. happening right now? Likely. 
crank position sensor. What do we do? We let her rest. <laughs> We're like a quarter mile from the house. Stop. <laughs> Come on. Trip. I shouldn't have gassed it so hard. Dad's looking at us. Of course he is. Well, somehow the coil pack wiggled its way loose. Don't know how. I don't know how we even made it this far, honestly. Uh, good news is the brakes work. I'm gonna return to base and complete our test drive. We made it and we still have brakes. Back in the stable and that pretty much completes our non ABS swap. Now, someone's probably gonna say, why would you delete your ABS? That's safety equipment. Honestly, you're no worse off than a Cherokee that came factory with an eight and a quarter. So that's what I have to say to that. But I'll put a part number for that pre-bent inline tube set down yonder in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy. See you in the next one.